week we're going to do landscape painting and get inspiration from the Shan Shui movement, which was in the 5th century in China, um, part of the Northern Song period. Um, and it was beautiful, these beautiful uh, landscapes that um, all kind of shared a Taoist approach to life that we're all part of, we're all part of this world. Um, and they had three elements that are kind of interesting to think about when we're doing our um, landscape paintings tomorrow. So the three parts of a shang shui landscape are flow. Um, that means there's usually a road or a river or a waterfall going through it, something that leads our eyes, which when we get to the hacks later, that's one of the hacks that we use. Threshold is where that movement stops in the painting. So at some point that water, that stops, um, the road stops, the waterfall stops, and that is as, as the viewer we stop traveling. And when we stop, that is the heart of the painting. And that is where our eyes go, which I think is such a great word for the heart of your painting, the, the um, center of focus. So um, what are some modern landscape painters that we can be inspired by tomorrow that kind of also have some of these similar things? Um, De Turquio also, like some, of, some paintings have objects in the front and then you travel the road. Um, Rousseau has this river going through it. Um, there's a path on the on the left side of this. I would argue that traveling up this mountain is the path. Sorry, my my um, washer and dryer. <coughs> so we're traveling. That's our flow. Even in this, it looks kind of flat. This Van Gogh, there is a path going through it. Even this leg are very abstract. There's a path. There's a flow. Um, but there is not in some. So we could also, if you're not inspired by that, you could do um, like these Klimt paintings, a very flat. Um, you could do like grieve, very, very abstract, kind of uh, mess with your perspective. Um, you don't have to do the three-part inspiration, but even this has a path. As abstract as it is, I would argue the rainbow is our path here, and where it stops is the threshold. Um, some more really abstract, like Paul Klee, it's very flat. There is no path in it, but you could do that. This Pissarro is very, very straightforward, but there is a small path in it. Um, so basically what we're going to be thinking of is how are we going to travel back in space. Um, and I just want to provide you some examples. Um, this is Kay Walking Stick. And a current show she has up in, um, I think it's New York Historical, I want to go see, because she, she plays with the Hudson River School from a Native American artist perspective. So I thought these were really great. And she definitely has the flow in some of these um, and the threshold and the heart. So basically, when you're painting a landscape, you want the people to travel through that space with you, generally. Um, these Barclay Hendrix, again, you're traveling back in space, so we're going to play with color, we're going to play with uh, depth, and how we use the flow um, to get your, their eyes to travel back, if that's your goal. Sometimes that is not the goal in um, a landscape painting, but that's usually the goal if you actually want to create depth. Um, some American landscapes, that's what American is known for. These riders um, have a very similar feel to me in some of them. Um, Birchfield feels very much like the early Chinese ancient uh, Shang Shui. Um, Whistler, even though they're flat, you're still traveling back through that, and that's kind of helped by the objects. Um, again, look at the flow, the sh threshold, and the heart. And when you, s a lot of these you can see that in, which is really interesting. Um, and again, then some of the the paintings that um, that uh, were being referred to in the walking stick paintings are there. Okay, so here's some tricks. There's always tricks. Put larger, detailed objects in the front, smaller objects with less details in the back, because that's how your eye sees things. When your eye is looking, objects in the front look large, you have less detail. In the back, they're more vague and they're smaller. So when you're doing um, doing that, that's what you're going to do. Foreground focus, again, a large object in the front or several cows will um, make you feel that you're traveling back in time. So that is always a good trick. Bushes, um, houses, animals, whatever, we can play with space. So that's another thing we'll be looking at tomorrow. A lot of these have these objects and then the flow um, as we travel back in space with them. I don't know why I don't have the artist names in a lot of these. I feel bad, but I don't know if I'll go back <laughs> to have them, to be honest. But anyway, there is a, a great number. I wanted to have a lot of different styles so that when you come in tomorrow, you'll be very inspired. 
um, I hope you bring in an image of a place that is important to you. Um, another trick is lighter to darker or darker to lighter. Um, that is again how our eyes see, see space. So that's just a great trick. I guarantee you if you put a darker object, a larger object, and then um, you travel back lighter and smaller, it will just feel like you are traveling back in, in space. Um, we are also going to use our color wheels. I'll make sure we have it. Another thing is the S-curve path. Again, this is the flow that, that we first learned about. And you see it stops as the threshold, and that is the heart of your painting. So it's kind of just naturally where, where your eye goes because it's following that path. So whatever you have, we are going to insert a path in it, unless you're desperate to do a super flat abstract. Um, another thing, did I spell diagonals wrong? Oh my lord. Okay, so another thing is overlapping um, and diagonals just naturally creates um, a sense of traveling back in time. And so there's a reason why you see these things repeated over and over, these hacks in landscapes, because they work. And they just get you to move back in time. Or you can follow none of those rules. Uh, like George Morrison, um, Kandinsky, you know, they, a lot of them did not follow the rules. Um, and they just created flat, whistlers are kind of flat. Um, yeah, so that's an option too. So tomorrow we are going to use our color wheel and we're going to come up with color um, themes using four colors using our color wheel. So we'll use the color wheel. And we will use flow and heart and threshold, and we will do amazing landscapes. So bring in an image or have an image in your mind of a place you love. Okay, bye.